We're going to be learning about how to create 2D isometric views for drawings. You're going to learn how to switch between isoplanes. We use isoplanes to create the different sides of our isometric view, and we use ellipses to create isocircles that represent the holes in our isometric view. And we'll be modifying our dimensions on our isometric views so that they align with the isoplanes. Using isoplanes and the isometric tools is one of the easiest ways to create a 3D representation without actually having to move into 3D. Isodraft allows the user to place elements on isometric planes. You can use Ctrl E or F5 to cycle through the isoplanes. There are three isoplanes, left, top, and right. We use the ellipse tool with the isocircle option to place circles on isoplanes. We use the oblique tool to change the oblique angle of the dimension using plus or minus 30 degrees. If you're on the left isoplane, use plus 30 degrees. And if you're on the right isoplane, use minus 30 degrees. I have a 2D drawing using third angle projection with the top, front, and right side views. I want to add a 2D isometric view. I have some layers already defined with a layer for the object, layers for hidden and center lines, and a dimension layer that we'll be using later. I'm going to have my polar tracking on. I have polar tracking set to the 30, 60, 90, 120 degree angles. I'm going to turn on isodraft. You'll notice isodraft lets you toggle between isoplane left isoplane top and isoplane right. I'm going to use isoplane left to start. I select the line tool from the ribbon and start my line here. I look for the 150 degree angle and type in 100. I move my cursor straight up and type in 60. I move my cursor forward looking for the angle of 30 degrees and type in 25. I shift my cursor down and type in 50. I move my cursor toward the front and I use the end point of the start of my line to help me close the left face. I'm going to switch to the right isoplane and then I'm going to go back to the line command to draw my right face. I'll go to a 30 degree angle again and type in 50. I go up and type 10 and then come back and use the end point to complete that face. I repeat the line command, go over 10 at a 30 degree angle, go down 12, go over 30, go up 12, go over 10, come down 50, and then use the end point to complete that face. To complete my view, I want to switch to the top isoplane. This time, instead of using the status bar, I'm going to press Control E to cycle through my isoplanes until I get to the top isoplane. I use the endpoints of my existing lines to help me place my remaining faces as well as entering in the correct dimensions. I'm going to flip to the left isoplane for this remaining line using Control E and then I go back to the line, I come down 12 units, and then again use my endpoints to help me place that face. I use Control E to flip back to place the final line. Next I'm going to be placing an isocircle on the top face using the ellipse tool. In order to do that, we want to locate the center of the circle 40 units and midway from the edge. It can be helpful to draw a construction line to help you locate the center point of an isocircle. I like to verify that the construction line is located correctly by using the quick measure tool. 
I select the Quick Measure tool from the ribbon and verify that I have the correct measurement. I'm going to place my hole using an ISO circle. I select the Ellipse tool from the Draw panel on the ribbon. I want to use the Axis End option for drawing an ellipse. AutoCAD pr prompts me if I want to place an arc using Arc, Center, or ISO circle. I'm going to select the ISO circle option. I select the end point of the construction line to locate the center of the ISO circle. AutoCAD then prompts me for the radius or diameter of the ISO circle. I select the diameter option. I want an ISO circle with a diameter of 25 millimeters, so I enter that value. And my ISO circle is placed. I want to add the bottom face of this hole. To help place that ISO circle, I'm going to move the construction line to the midpoint of the bottom edge using the grips. I right click for recent commands and select the ellipse command and right click to select ISO circle. I select the center point using the end point of the construction line. I select the diameter option. I set my diameter to 25 units. I'm going to delete the construction line that I used to help place my ISO circles. I'm going to trim out the bottom ISO circle. I select the Trim tool from the Modify panel on the ribbon. I press Enter to select everything in the drawing as a cutting edge, then select the section of ISO circle to be deleted. I'm going to be adding dimensions to my 2D isometric view. Since I'm going to be placing dimensions, I'm going to switch to the Annotate tab on the ribbon. I'm still on the isoplane top. I can see that from the status bar and also from the way my cursor is oriented. I'm going to select the Align Dimension tool from the ribbon. I'll select one endpoint and then another endpoint and place the dimension. I'm going to use the Oblique tool from the ribbon. Since I'm going to use this tool quite a bit, I'm going to pin the panel open so the panel remains extended. I select the oblique tool, select the dimension, and set the angle to 30. And the dimension will clean up so that it looks quite proper. I'm going to place another dimension. I select the oblique tool, I select the dimension, and I enter 30. It doesn't work. Remember I said use a positive 30 degree angle for the left view and a negative 30 degree angle for the right view. Since I'm placing the dimension on the right isoplane, I need to use a negative 30 degree angle. I select the oblique tool, select the dimension, and I enter minus 30, and the dimension cleans up. You've learned how to create 2D isometric views for drawings using the isoplanes, learning how to use the shortcut keys to switch from one isoplane to another, using the polar tracking to help you stay in an isoplane, and using the isocircle option for the ellipse to place isocircles.